going to show you a very quick and easy way to create glowing effects with watercolor and uh, alcohol markers. So I hope you're going to enjoy this video and let's move on to the tutorial. Before I begin with the more detailed demonstration, I will quickly show you the technique I use to create a glow with both watercolors and alcohol markers. I'm using a Canson drawing paper here, but in the final demonstration I'll be using a higher quality paper on which the effects look even better for the watercolor part. I start with drawing a circle with the masking fluid. This will prevent the watercolor from staining the marked area. While the masking fluid dries, I will begin to demonstrate the alcohol marker technique. There are like with any other medium, multiple ways to go about it, but I'll be doing two here. The first one, you just pick a color and draw around the area you want to leave white. You can also use masking fluid with markers, but because markers bleed, there is a chance it still creeps a little bit through the masked area. When you're done coloring the glow, you can create a glow effect with the colorless blender marker by going over the outer edges. As you can see, it changes the color, but once it dries, the color goes back to normal, but slightly lighter, with a softer feathered edges. You can continue to go over it again with the colorless marker as many times as you want. To enhance the effect, do, do note, markers can behave slightly different and look a bit different depending on the paper you use. Now for the second technique, which is the one I'll be using in the full demonstration later, you do almost the same, but instead of a colorless blender, I use a lighter tint of the same color. So again, I draw around the area I want to leave white with a light blue tealish color, just like I did in the first technique with the pinkish color. Then I took a darker blue color and start from the inner edges toward the center of the first color that I laid down. Then I go back in with the light blue color to soften up the dark blue edges so that they gently blend in with the lighter outer color, creating a soft gradation. After that, you can choose to soften the outer edges up some more with a colorless blender. By now the masking fluid is dry so I can work over it with water and paint safely. If you start painting while the masking fluid isn't dry, then you risk dam damaging your paper when you try to remove it. Same goes when you apply masking fluid to wet or damp paper, so make sure your paper is dry when you apply the fluid. I like to use the wet in wet technique to create a watercolor glow. Wet in wet is when you wet the paper and go in with a wet brush and paint. So I start by wetting the paper and then load my brush with watercolor pigment and release it on the wet paper. Because the paper is wet, the pigments will flow greatly. But the more water is used in your brush, the lighter the color will dry. So if you want the color to be darker or brighter, you'll have to use less water and load your brush with more pigment. such as I'm showing here. I want the center to be more vivid so the contrast against the white center will be very strong. So I am adding more and more concentrated pigments on the paper with a dry brush. If your brush is too wet, you can make it more dry by holding it against a paper towel. The paper will soak up the excess water from your brush. Once the painted area is dry, you can remove the masking fluid. I'm using a rubber eraser to remove the masking fluid. A gentle rub will do the trick easily and fast. As you can see, you got a perfect white and crisp center of the glowy particle. Now you can leave it as it is or choose to add some sparkle detail. For the detail, I am using a white gel pen. But with ink or paint, it's fine to use as well. Sometimes the leather will work a bit better on watercolor, since watercolor can be reactivated 
which can result in a gel pen that skips or that it simply starts contaminating the ink in your gel pen. However, the jelly roll of the Sakura line works really well and performed better than other white gel pens I have tried. Using gel pen on alcohol markers is not a problem, since alcohol ink is permanent once it dries, so unlike watercolor it won't reactivate. But the downside to alcohol ink is that it isn't light fast. While most high-end watercolors are light fast, with exception for colors such as opera pink and other colors which are rather dye based than pigment based. So here I got the basics explained for this fun and simple technique. So let's put it to practice in a full blown illustration this time. The drawing I'll be doing today is an art trade piece for a fellow artist on DeviantArt. I will put their page in my description so you can check out their amazing works. As usual, I start out by sketching the design out on the paper. Before I start the sketch, I create a couple of thumbnail sketches. These help me to decide on the composition of the overall piece and on what mood I want to create. There are times I don't have to draw thumbnails, when an image pops into my head straight away. But with this one I wasn't too sure as I had multiple ideas and wanted to quickly explore them to see which one of the ideas was more effective on the paper. As for choosing my colors, I usually pick colors that work in harmony of the palette theme of the character or subject. For this piece, I'm working on Arcus cold pressed watercolor paper. Once the sketch is on paper, I go over it lightly with a netted eraser to make the lines lighter. I used a water soluble graphite pencil, so most lines should disappear once I start painting and coloring. Then I mask off everything that I want to keep white and clean. So each flame and glowy bits will be covered with masking fluid. I am using a masking fluid marker, but you can get them in bottles and jars as well. I just prefer the marker as it gives me more control and isn't as messy. After I got everything masked, I inked in the line art with a waterproof fine liner. In this case, a multi-liner from the Copic line. If you're not sure if your pen is water or ink proof, test it on a scrap piece of paper with both water and alcohol markers or ink. Once the line art is done, I start by painting in the background and most of the glows using the watercolors. For the background, I want a textured and grungy mood, so I used the Daniel Smith watercolors for this piece as they have some colors with amazing granulation effects, mostly found in their Primatec line. They also have some amazing metallic and duochrome colors, which I'll be using as well for this piece to give a subtle, real glow to the painting later on. I mostly work in sections with the wet in wet technique I showed before. Wetting the paper first using a very absorbing brush with a round belly which can hold a lot of water and paint. Most Chinese calligraphy brushes are amazing to use for watercolor paintings because they have water absorbing ability, but also providing you with a very fine tip for the smallest details, but at the same time can be used for big washes. These are my brushes of choice when working with watercolors. Since the flames and other glowy bits on the character are a sky blue kind of color, I chose to go with the Mangan Blue from the Daniel Smith series for the glow of the flames and the particles on the watercolor background. And once the paper is damp, I go in with a loaded brush of Mangan Blue and dip it close to the masked area and let it feather out on its own. Eventually, I will darker the color near the masked area as much as I need it to be. Then I start at the other end of the wetted area and add in an earthy tone called Tiger's Eye and let it slowly mix in with the ends of the Mangan Blue. 
It's important to start at the other end of the paper with the darker color to preserve the lighter color and to keep it from blending too much with the darker one and have it lose its vibrancy. By starting on the other end, the new color will slowly feather out to the first color you laid down, in which only the ends of, two, of the two colors reach each other and start to blend. This way you get a smooth color transition. While the paper is still damp, I come back in with the amazing granulating color hematite, if I spelled that correctly, I don't know, and put it straight over the tiger's eye, giving it an amazing texture and subtly enhances the contrast between the earth tones and the bright blue. You keep repeating this process until you get every spot on the background covered this way. You can decide to leave it as is and move on to the main subject, but I decided to add a bit of an extra effect to the glow by adding a layer of the metallic color electric blue to the mangan blue layer, which is also from the Daniel Smith watercolor line. This intensifies the blue color around the flames and gives a real life glow to the piece as the color is reflective. Of course, you can achieve the same effect with any metallic watercolor of any brand you got. When everything is dry, you can remove the masking fluid with a rubber eraser. For the glow in the mouth, eyes and antlers, I'll be using Copic markers. I start with the lightest color, frost blue, and cover the entire inner mouth of the creature. Then I take a slightly darker color and work from the top to the halfway bottom, and leave the furthest corner alone. I keep repeating this step but going darker each new layer and eventually blend the dark edges with the first color frost blue again. So the color transition will seem seamless. I basically repeat these steps for the eye and the parts of the antlers as well. The glowy parts on the creature I left masked as I still need to work these. I will do these with the Copics to show how similar the end result can be to the watercolor counterpart, with not too much effort. Again, I start with the lightest color, frost blue, and draw around the masked area, which are tiny so not much time is needed to work these. Then I add a darker blue color around the masked areas, and because of the bleed and them being tiny, you don't need to blend afterwards. Now you can remove the masking fluid or leave it until the end, whichever works for you. With glowy objects, remember there will always be reflective lights on your character or subject. When you work with media like watercolors and markers, you should add these first, before you go and color in your subject, as you won't be able to add them later with these mediums. After I added the reflective light around the mouth and snout, I started coloring the character, starting with a light color. The character itself is black, so I'll be working with blues, purples, grays and some browns to get it to look black. It's always a good idea to work with the colors from the background and, and foreground into your main subject to make it belong in its surroundings. Coloring with alcohol markers is a matter of layering, glazing colors on top of each other, pretty much how you would do it with colored pencils and watercolors. To an extent you can lift alcohol markers with colorless blender ink and markers, or with rubbing alcohol even, but not as well as you can lift pencils with a netted eraser, or watercolor which are pigment based with water or damp cloth. Alcohol ink is dye based so it will always stain. So I am slowly building my colors, being very careful with the darkest colors, adding them to places where I feel the shadows are deepest, just slowly building contrast. You can always add more if it is needed. At the same time I start drawing in details such as the furry texture. At this point I felt the grey was too grey, so I glazed over some violet to bring more life into the character. One of the reasons I wanted to paint this character of my trade partner was because 
it had these mix of fur and feathers, which seemed like a real fun and exciting challenge to create. And of course, the fact that it breathes fire. <laughs> Who doesn't like that? So while the fur is black and brings the fun challenge of reflect reflecting lights, the feather seems pearlescent, which can also be challenging to pull off in traditional media. So for the feathers, I blended fuchsia and a couple of light blue hues to make them appear dual chrome. On the longer wispy feathers, I applied the bright colors first before I added the grays so that they stayed vibrant. If I'd apply them after the gray tones, the bright colors would appear very muted and would not stand out at all. So for alcohol markers, the same rule applies as with watercolor. Spare your whites and apply light colors first. To add a bit of dynamics in the line art, I used a white luminance pencil by Caran d'Ache to trace over some of the inked line work. Basically where the light reflects onto the subject to enhance the glow effect on the character. I could have done this with a gel pen or white ink, but I wanted it to look subtle without taking too much of the attention away. With white ink or gel pen, the lines would be too strong and stand out too much. And that wasn't the look I was looking for in this piece. Lastly, I am going to enhance the color of the creature some more by glazing some of the earth tone tiger's eye on top of the copic layers to bring back a bit of the background colors. Also, to demonstrate, you can perfectly mix alcohol ink with watercolors and vice versa. For the final touches, I used the electric blue metallic paint to enhance the glow on the glowy particles on the creature, just as I did earlier with the flames. I also added some duochrome mauve on the purple feathers of the creature. So this was it for today's video. I hope it was helpful and fun. Please leave me a like if you thought it was and hit the subscribe button on my channel if you don't want to miss out on any of my future videos. Feel free to leave a comment as I love reading them and hopefully I'll see you back in the next video. And as always, thank you for watching and have a good one.